Uniting communities throughout the six. This is Urban Definition with your hosts, Sassin, Kareem, and Zane. On CHHA 1610. Got to love it, got to love it, got to love it. Today is Wednesday, May 17th, and you're tuned in to a new episode of Urban Definition. As per usual, and I do say usual, and I do say usual, and I do say usual, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Zane Jinnah. Hey, everyone. And Mr. Sassen Mirzai. Hey, guys. And we have not been on the air together for, has it been two weeks now? It's been two weeks, yeah. It has been two weeks. So long. It's, it's, been, it's been a crazy schedule for all three of us, you know? So long, yet so good. Kareem, where was I last week? I said you were in another country, but in reality, you were like down the road. Uh, and I say when I say down the road, I mean like in Toronto. Um, going to a, I was I was correct to a certain degree. You were at a private screening of a flim. Yes. So I got that right, thankfully. But I was not out of the country. <laughs> no, no. I was in Tobuco. Is that where you were? Yeah. Out of the car. and then yeah he texts me after he goes so when are you coming back to Toronto I'm like I I'm here now I live here I'm at work he goes oh I thought you were in the U S I'm like no man in just... my defense I genuinely thought that you were in the U S for a private screening of a flim of I... a movie that's already out of a flim that's already out <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised this guy's going on vacation like every week yeah it didn't make sense to me either because like back I'm gonna backtrack when I went to go see Wolverine at the um, private premiere screening mm -hmm. it was before it came out and the whole they had the whole red carpet so that's what i thought you were going to do i thought you were doing the red carpet and... i saw the movie on a wednesday after the fact that it came out <laughs> going up on a wednesday no that's the best i can come up with you remember that song though right yeah all right good i'm glad and with that let's begin with the news all right well the police are offering a fifty thousand dollar reward in the deadly 2016 shooting of a pregnant woman this week last year Candace Rochelle Bob, who was five months pregnant, was shot and killed. Toronto police today, or earlier this week, announced a reward of up to $50,000 of information leading to the arrest and conviction of an individual or people responsible for her death and of that of her baby, Kyrie. The baby was delivered by an emergency C-section, but died three weeks later in Sunnybrook's neonatal intensive care unit, and his death was registered as a homicide. Police are asking for people to come forward with information or to call Crime Stoppers anonymously. Managing editor of CBC's The National resigned after cultural appropriation flap. CBC has removed the new managing editor of The National. He is now the third media leader in Canada to lose his job or step down over the past week after weighing in on the, to on the toxic subject of cultural appropriation. Last week, we had a ransomware attack all over the world on Windows computers, and everyone freaked out. Even Best Buys around Toronto were shutting down all their computers. They weren't connecting to the Internet, and ransomware was just really this virus that locks out your computer and basically says, hey, pay us, and we'll unlock it. But people were freaking out too much. It wasn't for people with Windows 10 or whatever. It's just Windows XP because they stopped giving security updates. With summer weather on the way, as you could tell today, the TTC released a statement saying that the hot subway cars are, quote, not expected to be a problem this summer. The statement says that the crews have been working hard over the last seven months to ensure that riders traveling on the line to the Bloor Danforth line won't run into the same issues. The cost of fixing this problem was a cool $7.5 million. Last summer, the entire situation was quite the hot mess. Many people were forced to use the subway as the TTC was repairing AC units on a number of older cars. Someone even challenged Mayor John Tory to ride the entire line on an unair conditioned car so that he could experience the entire discomfort for himself. Now, as a protocol for this year, the TTC says that in the event that a car's system malfunctions while in service, the TTC will be able to re quickly remove and replace the affected train. The TTC said the crews have rebuilt HVAC systems on 151 cars and repaired those on another 63 cars. To reduce HVAC breakdowns in the long term, systems in all 370 older cars will be overhauled by the end of 2017. In the meantime, riders should continue to be patient as the summer unfolds. More making Trump film entitled Fahrenheit 11.9. That is right, you heard me absolutely correct. Michael Moore has been secretly making a Donald Trump documentary that he has dubbed Fahrenheit 11.9, titling it 
after the day Trump became president-elect. Producers Harvey and Bob Weinstein announced Tuesday they have secured worldwide rights to the film. Moore has been working on the film for months, and he promises it will be explosive. Moore also says Trump's ability to escape controversy ends with this film. Blizzard's game Overwatch will be turning one years old next week. And it's actually great because you're going to have a free weekend this weekend. And the impact it's made on the gaming community by giving out short films that have been played all over North America, along with events for free throughout the entire year. It's just a great game beating all the other competition. If you've ever had too much caffeine all at once and felt something wasn't right, be careful because it could cost you your life. In South Carolina, a coroner said that a 16-year-old high school student who collapsed and died in a classroom had heart problems caused by drinking too much caffeine. The student in question, Davis Cripp, drank a large Mountain Dew, a latte from McDonald's, and an energy drink within two hours before his heart stopped at, an, at a school on April 26th. The coroner, Richard Watts, said parents, and for the public at this matter, need to know that while a soda or a cup of coffee is okay, large amounts of caffeine can be deadly. Here at Urban Definition, we thought we'd share a few tips on reducing your caffeine intake as a small step to making sure no one goes over the edge. Number one, decrease your caffeine consumption gradually. Number two, water down your caffeine even a little bit. Number three, mix it up by drinking tea sometimes or even having some decaf options. And number four, stay hydrated. And number five, definitely do not drink all that caffeine all at once. I think that's a great idea. Never drink that much caffeine all at once. It, it killed the guy. Absolutely. Ford to cut 1,400 jobs by the end of this summer. Ford plans to cut 10% of its workforce across North America and the Asia and Asia this summer. But most job cuts are expected to be voluntary. Voluntary? Voluntarily. Either. The automaker said it expects about 1,400 job cuts from the total worker pool of 15,300, including 9,600 in the U.S., 1,000 in Mexico, and 600 in Canada. Oh, and also 4,141 in Asia, if you're counting math. Details of voluntary early retirement and separation packages will be offered to employees next month. None of the job cuts are expected to come from plant manufacturing, information technology, product development, credit department or, analy and an or analytics. All other skill teams will be included. If you remember Amazon Echo, that little cylinder thing you put in your house that basically tells you everything. It'll play music for you, it'll set reminders, it'll do everything. Well, its competitor, Google Home, will be allowing people to make free phone calls to the U.S. and Canada for free. And Amazon is not happy about this. The CNE is changing fee admissions for people with disabilities. People with physical disabilities will no longer be granted free admission to the CNE starting next summer in 2018, but they will receive a 50% discount on their ticket. After a review, the CNE board voted in favor of the new policy earlier today. The new policy means that any disabled person with an Access 2 card or an equivalent will be eligible for half-price admission for themselves and free admission for their caretaker. The CNE board also voted in favor of giving away 20,000 free tickets to organizations who work with people in disadvantaged communities. Festivities galore mark Montreal's 375th birthday. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau paid tribute to Montreal's founders and highlighted the city's cultural diversity as he joined the festivities in honor of the city's 375th birthday. Its francophone roots, its indigenous origins, the contributions of different communities and people who have come from all over the world to live here make it a city of it make it a unique city and one of its kind. The birthday festivities continued throughout today and were to culminate with the nighttime illumination of Jacques Cartier Bridge. Justin Trudeau also said he is a proud Montrealer even though he's born in Ottawa. I grew up in Ottawa, I was born in Ottawa, but my father was a Montrealer and he would bring us here quite regularly. He would tell us, no, you live in Ottawa, but you're Montrealers. You just don't really know it yet. Processors have come a long way throughout the years. If you look in your computer, you probably have a quad-core processor or maybe an eight-core processor, but there's news about AMD unveiling their new processor called the Ryzen, and it has 16 physical cores, which basically means 32 cores. And if this isn't news to you, this is actually basically the future. Imagine being able to make Pixar movies in your own house, because realistically, you're wondering, oh, I can probably do that already. No, 
in order to make these kinds of movies, just making a character walk maybe like a meter will take you at least three days of rendering. But with processors like these, you'll soon be able to do them in seconds. Counselor Michael Thompson was flying home for, with his mom from Jamaica when a man in business class became upset and was moved to a seat at the back of the plane near Counselor Thompson. It was a very difficult situation, but we had to be calm and try to reason with the individual, said Thompson. The man became more upset after Thompson talked to him, made him leave his seat, and then threatened him with a coffee pot. The man had also threatened to open the plane door and take the plane down. The man was eventually arrested, sorry, restrained, tied down, and arrested after an emergency landing in Orlando. He's been charged now, right? Yeah. Well, since then, he's been charged as well. Hmm. Interesting. So, I suppose now is when we fill in the gaps. News that we may have covered, didn't cover, or kind of input on other people's stories, right? Well, that cyber attack assassin you were talking about, so how far has that reached now? Because I've been reading about how it affected hospitals and banks. That's exactly what I was thinking, too, was the hospital thing that I, I didn't hear. Was, Sassen, were you aware that because of that attack, there was an entire hospital in the U.S. that had to get shut down because they couldn't access their elevators due to the virus? It's honestly because I've, I've done this myself. Like, if I go into my doctor's office and I look at their computer, they're running Windows XP. And Windows has told you three years ago or four or five years ago that we are no longer providing security updates for this operating system. So... They should have upgraded way before this. What about like Canada? Because I've heard Canada got lucky and wasn't targeted. Is no, that everywhere was targeted. It was worldwide. So, so even, just, even places in Canada. Yeah, but you're just not really hearing about it because there's none that have been extremely devastating. It's That's... just Windows XP computers. I've, my friends have gotten this virus before. Basically, you give them your credit card info. They'll pay off whatever they want, and then they'll unlock your computer. Did you hear about the whole uh, Disney thing? I did, yeah. They're holding Pirates of the Caribbean. Is that which film it is? Is this a Pirates? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that which film they were talking about. They're hosting. At the time. <laughs> they're holding Pirates Five hostage to a ransom. And it's funny because didn't was it last week that they released Orange Is the New Black season five? Something like that, yeah. And uh, just so you uh, off the record here, um, it wasn't that great. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I never understood. Is Pirates of the Caribbean like the final version that they have? The what final movie of the series? Is yes. it like no, no? I mean, is it like the final cut? So. I, oh, I, I don't remember, know. If it's do you remember cut. a few years ago with Wolverine? They had hacked it, but then they released parts of the movie, and it was all like they're still green. You can see, yeah, you can like see that. some of the wires and stuff to like me, that. That's like that's like stealing cookie dough, and not the cookie itself. Like, why why would you do that? Yeah, why would you watch that? That's like, true. I remember people showing me that, and I'm like, Deadpool's not even in it. It's just because Deadpool was all CG in that movie. He wasn't there. It was just Wolverine fighting himself. But it's like, what what's the point of even stealing that and then showing it? to It's not going to do anything. If you're going to steal something, steal the whole movie. Not that we condone stealing here, but <laughs> piracy is a crime. But I mean, like, just if you go and do, do it, it, do it right. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Amateurs. <laughs> Amateurs indeed. <laughs> also, um, you had mentioned the uh, Amazon Echo. Uh, I don't know if you guys are SNL fans. Zane apparently is a fan, and I never knew that. Um, did you see the Echo Silver, the parody of... No? No. Ah, no. oh, man. Here's the thing. I only watch SNL on YouTube whenever I can find clips. So because we're, we're going to commercial in one minute, but I will, I'll try to do this super quick. During the weekend, they spoofed Amazon Echo with Am Amazon Silver, and it was basically Amazon Echo for old people. And they're like, it will, re it will pick up any name that sounds remotely similar to Alexa. It's like, <laughs> hey, uh, Melissa. Yes. <laughs> and it was just like, all these like rent. But anyways, it was it was amazing. And I wasn't sure if Sassen was going to touch on it, but I wanted to mention it because it was absolutely perfect. Speaking of SNL, actually, I'm really I'm really happy with them right now. Like their past seasons, I've seen some work. Not that great. But this year, they've really stepped it up. It's funny because I actually disagree with you. I like previous seasons. But I, like, I've watched them religiously. Melissa, Melissa McCarthy as Sean Spicer. Okay, that was magnificent. That was there's nothing I can say ill about that. That was Amazing. Even, even the way they covered the whole election. They did a great job. I am very happy with their electoral coverage. I am not happy with the way that they shaped this season. It was a little bit disappointing. With that being said, this weekend is uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Katy Perry for the season finale. Should be good. We got to go to commercial. We will be back. Stay tuned, guys. The gang is here. Urban Definition. Urban, Urban Definition. 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 On CHHA 1610. This is Urban Definition. What up, everybody? Welcome back. Um, usually this is the part of the show that we like to do real talk. However, we have a 
very special guest in house, and I'm gonna call this 2.0, but I'm not gonna introduce her because I tried to remember the term. Like, was it like 10 minutes in that I was trying to get the saying down? Pretty much. And now that it's time, I forget it again. So, as I said pr before the show, Zane, you introduce the guest. Our next guest is actually a self-described wandering soul. That's the word, Kareem, wandering soul. Good, because I was going to go with hopeless soul. Hopeless soul? You weren't supposed to say it on air. <laughs> that's okay. I was going to say hope. I mean, it's because I kept forgetting, and I was just like... What is so hopeless? No, that's not the thing, though. It's not that, it's not, it's not that our guest tonight is hopeless. It's that for some reason in my head, it got processed... Was it Wandering Soul? Yes. Oh, there you thank go. goodness. I got still it that don't time. remember. <laughs> I don't know. I don't so know. So our next guest is a Wandering Soul who has traveled a lot throughout her life. And here she is tonight to talk to us about her upcoming stuff as well. Her upcoming expedition, if you will. Hi, guys. So, Zayn, because you probably forgot her name. Her name is Melanie Vogel, not Melody. Welcome, Melanie Vogel. That's true. I completely wouldn't. Cream first uh, told me I, I completely butchered your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So, last week you came on for a very short period. This week we've got you on for the rest of tonight. And hopefully tonight it will be, you know, we'll cover everything. But before we get to that, I want you to tell me a little bit about what it is that you will be exhibitioning. No, that's the wrong term. I don't know what the term you're looking for here. Tell is. me about your voyage, Mel. Well, um, in two weeks, on May 31st, I will be stepping onto the trail. Well, let's let's start over. I will be flying out to Newfoundland, St. John's. Okay. Will make my way to Cape Spear, the most eastern point of Canada, to start my journey across the country on the Cray Trail, 15,000 kilometers for the next two years. So when you say across the country, you literally mean across the country. From the east to the west. And where is the farthest west that you will be traveling? Um, that will be Vancouver Island, Victoria. Holy jump. Have you been to any of these, other than Toronto, because we're in Toronto right now, mm -hmm. have you been anywhere else across Canada prior to your voyage? I have lived in Vancouver for four and a half years. Wow. So, of course, I've seen Vancouver Island before. I also traveled to the Rocky Mountains. So, so I've seen a bit. So, hold on. You've lived in Vancouver for four and a half years? I did. But you don't have a Vancouver accent. Of course not. Mine so, is German. <laughs> so, where, so where are you initially from? <laughs> from Germany. Where in Germany? From East Germany, from Dresden. Very cool. Sassen, you've traveled across the no, vast wide Europe? No. Sassen's never been to Europe? I was born in the UK and I went to Holland. Oh, that's what I was, <laughs> I was like, hasn't, I was like, hasn't this guy been to like Holland and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting your facts from? I thought I could swear. Did, I thought he said he'd been across like I've Europe. been to like a bunch of countries. I've been to like Italy and like Austria and stuff, but, but never made your way to Germany. No. So there goes our, there goes my hope of Sassen knowing where you are from. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Dresden is a wonderful town. Interesting. Really, yeah. You know, I've been wanting to visit Germany. Actually, I I was in uh, Frankfurt for a stopover once for like about a couple hours. Yeah, Frankfurt is not. Yeah. It's not. It's really just a. T a city for a stopover. <laughs> in I, my, at least in, I never got to. I never got to step outside of the airport. So for me, it was like, oh, I guess I'm technically in Germany. <laughs> Not really, but yeah, that's there cool. are other great, greater cities in Germany than Frankfurt. So, mm. so I just wanted to clarify: you're traveling fifteen thousand kilometers across Canada. Yes, that is a lot of land to cover. I mean, given the fact that it's all of Canada. Why Vancouver Island? Isn't there a little bit further east? I think like... Um, you mean west? To yeah, sorry, further west. Uh, Tofini or something? Well, the crate, the crate Trail starts in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, and then will lead all the way to, uh, to Vancouver Island, Victoria. That's where it ends. That's where you find uh, kilometer zero. So oh. this is a lot of traveling. I mean, mm -hmm. we've covered the fact that you're from Germany. You've lived in Vancouver, and you're going to be... And now you're in Toronto. But I mean, other than that, like... Zane called you a wandering. Well, she's actually called herself that. I think it's a it's a nice way to say something like that. But do a you have other soul. than other than North America? Well, not even North America, Canada. Do you have like any traveling background? Well, I traveled extensively since I'm since my twenties. So obviously um, more than Sasson has. <laughs> what? 
I guess a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> so where have you been? So um, all over Europe, of course. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I started. And then um, I lived uh, one year in the U.S., so I traveled a lot in the U.S. And then um, from 2011 to 2013, I traveled to Asia and Australia and New Zealand. Now, for all your traveling, is this the first time that it's walking across the entire country? Or have you? is that kind of what you've been doing so far? Well, I always travel on a shoestring budget, backpacking, but I've never really did a through hike in this, uh, you know, extent. And how long did you say it's going to take you to get across the entire country? Two years. Two years? Yeah. Wait, I had a really quick question. What is a shoestring budget? A small budget. And what? Very what, small. Give me like a number. Throw me a, like a, per day. How much are we surviving on per day? Well, I'm planning for the trail <laughs> a ten dollar budget per day. Okay, that's that's still manageable though, no? Well, it's manageable if you have a tent. That's very true. I did not think about that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, actually, I wanted to get into that. Tell me about your plan to travel across Canada. What do you? How do you do? How do you plan that with a shoestring budget? Well, it's not as easy as if you make a fortune. Right. So um, I work two jobs. Then I uh, live a very minimalist life. So I'm not um, spending much on um, luxuries. eating out on luxuries. Um, so I it was all very um, organized. Mm. Methodical. So you've planned this out. This is something that you've been planning for a long time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what I also did is um, if you have not a lot of money, you like I started to communicate a lot and uh, to reach out to sponsors. Mm -hmm. So I confirmed quite a number of sponsors that would uh, support me with gear. And now are we talking like corporate spots, like North Face, that type of stuff? Or are we talking more like ma and pa shops that w just want to help you? Um, no, corporate sponsors like Fjord Raven, uh, Big Agnes, uh, who will sponsor me a tent, or like sponsors even back in, in Europe, uh, like Bushcraft Essentials, who sponsor me a firebox. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So this is legit. This is actually happening. This is happening. Yeah. There's, there's one thing that confuses me. Are you cycling across Canada? No, I'm walking. Oh, you're walking. Oh, my goodness. One okay. step at a time. One step at a time. <laughs> so it's like a slower version of Terry Fox. Because he much. jogged it, right? Which is a yeah, good transition. Which is, I'm glad Sassen brought that up because that's a transition for us right now. And that is, is there a cause behind this? Or is this just because you are, in fact, a wandering traveler? I'm remembering. Soul. 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 What? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you almost had it. <laughs> and I gave myself credit for it, too. Well, um, no, there is no charity attached. Um, I want to do. A, I just want to go. Um, I'm doing. I'm doing this pretty much for myself. I want to explore this country, and I want to uh, connect with local people. I and I feel like. I feel walking is the best way of getting to know a country. You know, I, I think that's something that most Canadians would like to do. Because I know I, I've been wanting to do a road trip across the country, for example. But, you know, finding the time and things like that. So so hearing about this is actually interesting because I know you said it's going to take you two years to do this. How do you – that's that's – I don't even know what I was going to ask. That's just – that's amazing. You, that's the best way to get to know a country, though. So what are you hoping to, to really get to know? That's such a that's such a deep question, Zane. <laughs> what are you getting to know? Well, obviously, she's going to be able to find broad. herself along the journey. All right, how about this? More specifically, what what is it that you've seen or heard about Canada in in different places that you are looking forward to? I think Zane's basically asking why Canada. No, right. not why Canada. What in Canada? Later, we actually we can tie it in with why Canada. Well, I'm I'm seeing Canada from a traveler's perspective, and then I, I want to know the people, the culture, traditions. Um, I want to meet people in Newfoundland because I hear all about them, how kind and nice they are. So I'm thinking this is the best part in Canada to start off my travel. And uh, then, of course, it's nature. 
for Europeans especially, if we think of Canada, we think of first nature and forests and bears. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not a bad stereotype, actually. <laughs> better, than, better than our neighbors to the south of, you know, guns and crazy presidents. I love how you would say that. Yep. Guns and crazy presidents. I mean, that's a, that's what you hear on the news all the time. And I'm, uh, bears and forests, I'll take any day than than the crazies. Very true. Well, Canada's n known for for its friendliness, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. Mel, I'm enjoying this conversation. I don't want it to end, but we do have to take a commercial break. Stay tuned, guys. UD Nation, all the way. Urban, Urban. Urban. Definition. 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 On CHHA 1610. This is Urban Definition. Welcome back to Urban Definition. We have a guest, Melanie Vogel, with us, who is a wandering soul world traveler. She's going to be traveling next, starting next week, or in two weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks from Newfoundland down to Victoria Island. Now, Melanie, just before the break, you told us that you chose Canada because as a European and as a traveler, you hear Canada as naturous and um, friendly. You know, very friendly. Mm -hmm. My question is, because you said it's going to take a period over two years, the first question, have you ever experienced a true Canadian winter because you lived in Vancouver for four years but you should know Vancouver doesn't always get <laughs> the winter that we get in fact they get pretty much what we call spring <laughs> all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. so I'm just I'm just wondering if you're prepared for have you experienced a real Canadian winter first of all I did back here in Toronto but never camped out during the winter in Canada no so what are, and this is going to bring me to my broader question, what are some of the challenges that you anticipate and how do you plan on dealing with them? Well, there are a few. Um, of course, the, the weather, since we are talking winter. Um, and also because weather always is unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So learning about the weather is important in this regard. And uh, then wild animals and you, you wouldn't think so but actually also small animals like like ticks i'm thinking right i'm more afraid of of ticks and getting a lyme disease than meeting a bear which statistically is pretty low so um then well if we if we talk Safety on the trail as a woman there's always this uh, aren't you afraid you know being you know, meeting this two-leg predator out there and yeah. being harassed. But I think the chance of doing so is higher in a city than someone waiting for you on a trail or waiting for a mm -hmm. smelly hiker on the trail. <laughs> that's, the thing that, that's the thing that really scared me because you said that you're going to be posting pictures on Instagram throughout the journey, right? Mm -hmm. So wouldn't people be able to find you that way? Well, it, there will be always a time gap in between my hike and taking that picture and then posting, posting oh, okay. it. So they'll yeah. never n find a way to access where you are. Yeah. Okay, so that's but they they'll know the trail that she's on. Yeah. Oh, the trail's being given out. Well, it's a uh, pretty famous trail. Oh. Okay. Um, it's an know. urban trail, and uh, so uh, I will be assuming there there's constantly people on that trail. Um, so uh, the next uh, or the next settlements, uh, what what the trail organization says is fifty to eighty kilometers uh, away from the trail. So I'm I'm coming through a lot of small settlements, towns, even big cities. Like it connects all the big cities throughout the whole country. And you're gonna be camping mm -hmm. every single night for two years. Well, I'm kind of relying a little bit also on the kindness of strangers, and there is already a really wonderful network building. Um, a lot of women come back to me and offer me a meal, a place to stay, the, um, even a donation or whatever help I will need. And I also got already uh, requests if women or yeah, women can join me for for a part of the hike. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. How do you plan on hiking through the winter, though? I'm I'm mostly interested in that for myself because. I can't even take stepping outside for more than five minutes in, in the winter. So and I'm it's Canada with six months of winter. I, all that all that snow, <laughs> sub zero temperatures. I first thing that happens is winter. When I go outside, I immediately want to go back inside. 
you're going to be going <laughs> even further outside <laughs> down the road. Well, you, you have to have the right equipment and you only so called as like the way you dress, right? Or f from everything. So I will during the winter time I will pull a sled because everything will be more heavier, like my sleeping bag, the tent for the winter, snowshoes, extra um, clothes that I have to wear. So, uh, yeah, I will pull a sled. Oh, so you'll be buying them on the way, your sleeping bag um, or not? Lots of gear I have already. But how will you pick it up? I have a friend who is sending me a gear to the trail. Oh, so everything's planned out. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, that's that makes sense. That's cool. So this is this is definitely more planned out than we and you and I thought. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was just all right. Well, I'm gonna walk one day and see where I go. <laughs> yeah, no, good. it's it's planned. Yeah, you have to. So, talking about planning, how have you been planning or training for the unexpected, especially living in the downtown core right now? Well. When I made the decision to start with my hike, that was uh, last year, July, and I just said, okay, I do it. And the first thing I did was watching YouTube videos of through hikers posting their documentaries on YouTube. And I read a lot of uh, um, articles about other adventurers and how they coped during their journeys. And the next thing that I did was um, I researched equipment. Um, and I learned that the hiking community went really ultra light over the last years. So I'm far away from going ultra light, even though I learned today. I went to the Canada Post Office weighing my backpack that I'm training with right now, and it's 16 kilo and has almost everything inside. So I'm I'm pretty good. Um, and then, of course, I have to test my equipment. I went for hikes. I uh, I run, I always cycle everywhere. So I'm, I think I'm pretty fit. That's good. One, mm -hmm. thing, I, one thing I do want to ask is um, in terms of having enough food on the way. Now, you said, you know, hoping to rely on the kindness of strangers and stuff, but you're also going to have to – how are you planning to eat? Well, I cook. I have my firebox. I have my little pot, and well, I have a bear canister with food inside, and so... I, I think what Zane was getting at, though, was the fact that you're going to be on a trail. You know, there will be times where you're going to be, you know, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. Well, that's what I have my bear canister for, that is filled with food. So and I what can... kind of food are we talking? Well, we, ca we are talking oats, we are ca talking all kinds of nuts and dried fruit and dried vegetables and um, noodles, <laughs> everything that brings energy right so so a higher calorie diet maybe to, yeah. to be able to sustain all that energy exactly and as i say it's an urban trail so i will for example the the trail in newfoundland is 883 kilometers long but i will only be three days away from settlement in that entire trail so i pretty much walk all along settlement over there and then are you able to restock your supplies, especially with food, along the trail? I'm, yes. I'm assuming so. Yeah. You can't keep food That's... for two years. <laughs> <laughs> and has that also been pre-planned? Like you already know exactly where you're going to be stopping? Or have an idea of like this town or this city? Yes. Interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. What are some of the unexpected challenges you just like? It'd be creative, but you know. That, that you've you... planned for. Or even, <laughs> even that you. Unexpected challenges I planned for. Yeah. Um... Well, winter is one. It really is one. What about like uh, the the animals or the the Zane tits? wants the Zane wants to know how you plan on on dealing with a bear attack. Not just a bear, but anything. A moose. <laughs> a moose attack. <laughs> what if there's a really bad storm one day? She did say weather. Didn't? Oh, she said winter. She I, said she said oh, weather as well. But and I, mean, I said weather as well. Yeah. But you know, like given. Given the way that the unpredictability has been, right? How are you going to deal? Like, let's say you get a torrential downpour. All your stuff gets soaked. You're in the middle of nowhere. How do you deal with that? Well, you have the proper equipment, first of all. Then I did uh, some survival training to know where to pitch my tent. And uh, I have a tarp that would cover my tent on top of it. So I do a lot of precautions that would keep me safe. Will it always keep me safe? Of course, I don't know. You know, so... Uh, um, we can prepare, we can try to prepare, or I can try to prepare 100%, but, you know, if the situation appears, like if a bear really charges at me, holy cow, 
<laughs> what am I doing? You know, so I probably would freeze rather than run. Damn. Okay. <laughs> what are the, what are some of the survival, um, some of the survival training that you've been doing? Um, for example, how to make fire without a lighter, mm -hmm. knots, um, compass training, um, reading, reading the weather, all these kind of things that become essential. Like also learning really to, uh, before you go out, um, check the weather, check the clouds to know, uh, you know, can you go further? Should you set up your tent or your, your camp already? These kind of things. Okay. Um, so last last question on this whole survive on the survival aspect. <laughs> if you have nothing for our listeners, what are the three major things if nothing else that you always have to secure in a survival situation? Fire? Fire first? Yeah. Fire's number 1. Because fire will always keep you uh, it it brings your warmth. Right, mm -hmm. so uh, having something to make a fire mm -hmm. is essential. Okay. Then um, the next thing that I have, I'm just looking my compass <laughs> to find compass my way. is number two. Is my to find my way back to find my way out? Yes. Okay, so fire number one, compass number two, and uh, and wa and water, I would say. And water's number three. Mm -hmm. So something you don't know about me, Mel, is that I actually did survival training with Les Stroud and David Arama. Oh, wow. Uh, Survivor Man, yeah. And for me, I was learned, I was taught that it goes shelter, fire, water. Okay. Because you can serve out of the three, you can last the longest without water. Shelter will keep you the warmest, and in any survival situation, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. probably the best. And then fire is, is your But stacking. a shelter you can build, right? So shelter you can build, but shelter is number one. You go, you start oh, with shelter. Okay, but I thought what I'm what do I have to bring with me? So no, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you. Know, you. So. Yeah, hundred percent mm -hmm. I got you, yeah, yeah. For sure. So I guess I'm sure these guys have more questions, but my last question of the evening is what do you want people to get out of your experience? Because there's a lot of people that are gonna be following you on social media, a lot of young girls, for example, who have you know a passion for the same thing that you're going to be doing what do you want them to get out of seeing your experience and learning from you so really like what i really would like uh, people to show is that you if you set your mind to something you can do it you know i i grew with this whole experience um so i learned so much along the way alone in my preparation so i feel now compared to Last year, July, I've learned so much. So I'm, so I feel like I'm ready now, and and so I, I believe, like if you have a project for yourself, just start it. Just go ahead. Don't feel disencouraged by naysayers or anything, and um, and sometimes just step outside, take a deep breath, you know, um, sit by the river, take your time, slow down a little bit. You know, don't make busyness your mantra. These kind of things is what I would like to uh, to tell people. And and also as a woman, it's like y you can go for a solo hike. There's if you prepare properly enough, then it's possible. You know, there's nothing to to be uh, so uh, fearful about that it needs to hold you back. There's so many people across this country and I realizing this right now that are building this network that will so you, you you're always somehow safe there's people constantly looking after you that's that's some very sage advice and it's very motivational and inspirational actually to, to go out there and live your dream yeah now thank you just to just to have a little bit of fun with this um, what is the longest time period of travel that you've had apart from what you're planning this from this like so you're saying this is going to take you two years what's the longest journey you've taken so far oh that was my travel back in two th from 2011 to 2013 when i backpacked all over asia oh Aust wow australia and new zealand now in canada you've been you've lived in vancouver you're here right now where else have you been in canada and what is your favorite place hmm i love bc do you love bc i do love bc for its mountains and f for its nature altogether, it's it's a beautiful place to be. It's very laid back, 
Uh, and I love the Rocky Mountains. I mean, there is a reason why all the tourists want to go there. <laughs> where, where in BC specifically? Like Vancouver, or the island? Or... Zane's asking because he's been there himself. <laughs> I, I love Vancouver. Too. Like I love BC as well, but I've only been to like that small area. I think like... I prefer Vancouver Island over Vancouver. What about like, uh, I don't know, Kamloops? Z- yeah. <laughs> Never, I've never been. I'd, I'd like to just visit these places. I'd like to visit a lot of small towns. I've been there, but it's not a place where I would like go crazy about. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I guess that makes sense now. Now, why you're starting your journey east and going west? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Well, Melanie, thank you so much for coming on the show and then sharing the details about your trip with us and inspiring people right now to to kind of live out their dreams how do people follow you on social media um you can follow me on facebook uh, under tales between sunsets on twitter between sunsets instagram between sunsets and then i have a website that's called between sunsets.com no way yeah (laughs) who would have ever guessed that one (laughs) but no zane said it it's been an absolute pleasure having you on air it's been a lot of fun um we tried this last week tonight was the melanie melanie 2.0 it was fantastic. I enjoyed it. I hope you had much, as much fun as we did, if not more. I did. Uh, we'll be back, guys, after this commercial break. Um, thank you again, Mel. You're amazing. Thanks for inviting me. Be back, guys. Stay tuned. Urban, Urban. Definition. Definition. On CHHA 1610. <laughs> You are listening to CHHA 1610 AM, Radio Voces Latinas. Located at 22 Wonderly Drive, Toronto, Ontario, M6B 289. Contact 416-785-0680. Website www.sanlorenzo.ca. CHHA 1610 AM, lo studio centrale, la sede al 22 Wanderley Drive in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, posto al code EM6B2N9. Radio Voce Latina, la prima stazione etnica della comunità, una stazione radio in Canada. E la stazione radio Voce Latina è San Lorenzo Latin American Community Center e il numero telefonico è 416-782-2953. E c'è anche l'email info chiocciolavocelatina.ca. Mamá, cierra los ojos, te tengo una sorpresa Uy, ¿qué será? ¿Y estos tickets? ¿Para quién son? Para ti, mami Este sábado 27 de mayo en el local 183 Te invitamos a festejar el Día de las Madres Con Natalie Castro y su orquesta Artistas locales, música para bailar Y platos latinoamericanos Puertas abren a las 6 de la noche La entrada, 10 dólares 1263 Wilson Avenue ¿Te gustó, mamá? Me encantó Buscaré mi vestido para el 27 de mayo Artistas confirmados, Rebeca Solier, Rosario Arce, Lucía Larraín, Inspiración Style, Joel Zambrano, Grupo Folclórico Nueva Siembra, Edgar Díaz, Héctor Rubén, Tía Lowe y su orquesta, y Natalie Castro con su banda. Invita CHHA 16 AM, Radio Voces Latinas. It's time to make your dreams come true at Algonquin Careers Academy. Fulfilling career training needs for over 35 years, Algonquin Careers Academy offers diploma programs in law, healthcare, and business. We have financial aid available with access to many government grants and special program bursaries. For more information and how to get started in your new career, call Nestor Mejia at 905-361-2380. It's time to make your dreams come true at Algonquin Careers Academy. CHHA 1610 AM Radio Voces Latinas More Voices 24 Hours Through Programming Continues Ciao, sono Mario Grazie a Voce Latina presento da oltre due anni tutte le sere da lunedì a venerdì dalle 11 pomeridiane a mezzanotte La Bella Italia le più belle canzoni degli anni 60 e gli anni 90 ascoltate e fate ascoltare con gioia allegria e amore la vostra musica del cuore. Ciao. Anunciate con nosotros. Anunciate en CHHA 1610 AM. Ya 
Llama, llama a nuestro departamento de ventas 416-782-2953 y conoce nuestros paquetes publicitarios para anunciarte en la voz de la comunidad. Llámanos 416-782-2953. This is Urban Definition. What up, guys? Welcome back. Um, once again, it was an absolute pleasure having Melanie on air with us tonight. Uh, I am super stoked for her travels and following her along her journey over the next two years. Definitely. We're going to post up her social media and website on our Facebook page, which if you go to urbandefinition.ca, you can find all of our social media tabs there and so we'll post our information up and give you a chance and a way to follow her for sure i wonder if she's going to be like walking around for a backpack and like have her instagram name on her bag that's, i wonder we'll see cool we should we should tell her uh, to do something like that <laughs> and if you have suggestions on how melanie can best utilize her next two-year venture feel free to uh follow the links that zane's going to post and send her your comments messages concerns um and you know, if you have some words of inspiration for her yourself, by all means, please uh, send them off to her. Good vibes only, though. Absolutely. I agree with that. 100% good vibes. But Mel's a very positive person, so, uh, I mean, anybody who I've ever seen with her or interacting with her has been nothing but positive. So, should be good. Most definitely. 100%. So, getting back to that news for a second from the first segment, I don't think any of us covered the fact that, well, there's two things. There was one, the, um, the senator in the, or was he a a member of Congress in the U.S. who uh, gave a speech today uh, calling for the impeachment of Donald Trump. Yeah, I, I read something about that, but I didn't read too much into it. Do you have any more details? I don't, unfortunately, and I wish I did, but that happened today, and I was just like, oh my gosh. And then I just, it just, it just kind of clicked in my head that we, we didn't actually talk about this. So the whole thing was that um, James Comey, who was fired Comey. from... Comey. Comey, sorry, from the FBI, who was fired by Trump... Um, basically said that the reason he was fired was because Trump called him in for a private meeting, basically said, I want you to stop investigating and probing. Uh, I forget the guy's name is like Flynn. Michael Flynn. Yeah. Michael Flynn. Thank he, you. The former, I want to say Secretary of Defense. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And when he was like, no, he was, you're fired. Also with the Russia investigation too, that right? That true. But either way, that was, that, 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 uh, call for impeachment was this morning so i'm interested to see what happens from there i know that trump did give a statement basically saying you know they can look they can see whatever they want my um my priorities are to uh are with the people and look out for america's best interests yep <laughs> so it's like i have nothing else to add to that one I, you know what i've been watching so many late night shows on youtube that <laughs> i just see all these contradictory and hypocritical things from Trump. I'm just I'm just so done with it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care anymore. That's not funny anymore. This is why I said earlier in the show, you know, I'm happy our stereotype is bears and forests. Fair enough. The second thing that we forgot to cover was the um se the island, Center Island, uh being restricted for public access. Yes, that's true. They are the city is going to hold um, ferries going to the island up until July. They're hoping July because there is flooding on the island right now. So I don't know if you guys realize this, but there's actually a public school on the island. Yeah, I read about that today, too. I, You know, we did forget a lot of news. Way to go, Zane. But going on about that, so it's going to be on the mainland now? Yeah, so what they're doing is, as for now, I think what they're doing is they're, they're moving the kids to the mainland, and I guess they found somewhere else to conduct classes for now who goes to school on the toronto islands there is a legitimate school called like the people live toronto there? island school i didn't know people live on the island or they send in the morning you drop your kids off for that ferry and it takes them to the toronto island school that's in, that's that's crazy that's, <laughs> some first, cool. that's some first world stuff right there that is i never would have thought that no not at all actually it would have been interesting um if mel was still on on air to kind of ask her like how would she deal with something like that where it's like part of her her her, her path has been like just completely flooded like what accommodations or what we is she should gonna do we should ask her on urban definition and get her to answer that Absolutely. I would love to hear that because that's something that it's like one of those things that it just absolutely you're not prepared for. It, and if it happens, it's like, are you screwed? Pretty much. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. 
Sasson, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I was really shocked that you two didn't talk about the one thing I do like every year. The zoo. Oh, got... the strike. How have you guys not I mentioned I thought you this? were going to actually bring that up. I saw but that I'm news tech. and I was like, that's... Uh... You could still bring up I'm the tech. zoo. I can't talk about the strike. Sasson does, have a, Sasson does have a valid point there. <laughs> oh, come on. He could talk about the strike. It's, the zoo is his thing. Also, because it's been two weeks, no, none of us have actually talked about the rental strike, have we? Nope. Because we haven't been together for so long at this point that none of us talked about the Parkdale rental strike. I didn't the, know there was a Parkdale rental For those of you who don't know, um, there's like a large number of people in um, the Parkdale area that are currently on rental strike. They're not paying their rent in protest of the accommodations, in protest of their, the landlords are trying to hike up the rent. So that's going on right now, too. Well, I mean, given the housing market that we have, it, it's been cool in the last month, but it's, it's a bit of a crisis. Last story that we forgot to cover, and I, I swear, Sasson, we will get back to the zoo business, I promise. <laughs> um, the Snowbirds. Um, have either, either of you guys been to the uh, CNE? Not since last summer. Do you know what the Snowbirds are? No. The plane, the big plane shows? Okay, yeah. So those guys have canceled six shows from Canada and the U.S. So if you are going to go see them, if you plan to go see them from, like, now until, like, the end of June, all of those shows have been canceled and you're out of luck. Wait, people actually pay to go see them? I thought it was just, like, a free thing at the CNE. No, they're, like, a legit troupe that people pay to go see. Oh, my God. I did not know that. I, I was like, oh, CNE, plane show starting. That mm -hmm. was cool. Next. No. <laughs> so, so guys, tell us about the zoo. Yes, please. Okay, so basically there's a huge strike at the zoo, and it's all the employees saying that they have no job security. And the problem with this is no one's there to take care of the animals. Like, the people in charge are like, we don't know the specific needs of each animal. And it's getting really dangerous. It's been almost a week now. Or there's got to be scabs, no? I, I would hope so. I hope I someone's ho taking care of the that's animals. One of the, yeah, that's one of the few situations where I feel like there have to be scabs. And I would hope that there are scabs. And for those of you who don't know what scabs mean, it's people who are part of, for example, that union or those people who are on strike that just say, you know what, the hell with it. I am going to step across the line. And I know you guys are are, pro are on strike, but, you know, the animals come first. I hope so. But mm -hmm. then the whole strike would go to waste. I don't agree with that. But Zane, what's going on this weekend? Well, this weekend, as you should be aware, is the long weekend, the May 2-4 weekend. And so here's what's going down. Friday, you have the Culinary Ontario Festival at Ontario Place. It's going to be this entire weekend. Friday, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. And Monday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can celebrate Ontario's 150th anniversary with a free admission four-day festival that is going to showcase Ontario's diverse culinary culture. On Saturday, you have the Waterfront Artisan Market at HTO Park, which is 339 Queens Quay, Queens Quay West. Sorry, Queens Quay. Every Saturday, Queens it's, it's going to be starting this Saturday, and it's going to go every Saturday until October 7th from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the HTO Park. The market features a carefully curated mix of 75 local, up-and-coming artisans, crafters, chefs, and bakers. On Sunday, you have the Sunday Barbecue Parking Lot Parties, which starts up this Sunday uh, and runs the entire summer from noon to 8 p.m. And it's going to be held by the Smoke Signals Barbecue, which is at 1242 Dundas Street West. The lot across Smoke Signals is going to be taken over for a barbecue. On Sunday, you also have the Trinity Bellwoods Park 4th Bed in Peace happening, uh, which is happening, sorry, at ben, tr uh, Trinity Bellwoods. There will be a live performance and... You can be, bring friends, food, and a blanket. And also on Sunday, you have the Christian Music Festival at Nathan Phillips Square from 1.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. It's gonna, They're going to feature award-winning singers and performances, and it's for free. And I don't know really what's happening on Monday because I didn't get that much time to look into it. But I'm sure things are going to be closed. Cop out. Did I you, know. Did you mention a rib fest? Wait, that's There's a weekend? rib fest? Isn't it tomorrow at Young and Dundas Square? All, all weekend? I only look from Friday to Monday, not... Not Thursday. I swear it's all weekend. But yeah, Rib Fest, Young and Dundas tomorrow. Are you going to that? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> we always tell him to go and take pictures, and we never get pictures. Yeah, remember he went to that pillow fight? And never saw anything from oh, it. right. I don't believe he was there. I don't <laughs> believe he was there either. Assassin exist. I don't know. Anyways, guys, have a fantastic weekend. Don't drink and drive. Have tons of fun out there, and enjoy the long weekend. Love y'all. Bye. C-H-E-H-E-R C -H -E -H -E -R. This is Urban Definition. <laughs>